Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Middle River Church. We are glad that you are here today and glad that we are reaching out to our community of faith through this video, and we hope that it will go well. And we just want to uplift our Lord today and uh, tell everybody out here we trust Him implicitly. We love Him, and we want to bring the message that He has given to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And so we are going to do that at this time. And so I'm going to read from Psalms, and I'm going to read Psalm 90, a part of it. It says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations, and before the mountains were brought forth, or even you have formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are our God. We have to remember that, I believe, as we begin our worship. He is God, and he is total control of this earth. He knows what's going on, and he know, he's not surprised by it. Matter of fact, I sometimes wonder if he just has to reach the limit of his patience and saying, hey, church, get busy. Things are coming, and I'm getting tired of all this stuff. So maybe it's time for us to think a little bit about that as well. But meantime, what we do is just go out here and praise and, and tell the people the gospel message of Jesus Christ, that he is the only way, the truth, and the life. And that's what we're going to do. So on that note, Bill, would you bring in the light of Christ? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As these words give us comfort in many ways and in many times, it definitely is a psalm that encourages us to know that we are comforted by knowing that the Father is our shepherd. And during this walk and this dark test that we have, that we face now with this, this opportunity that has come in, that has taken us away from connection of being together and worshiping together on Sunday, I just believe that the Father is reminding us that no matter what, we are still being shepherd and we will be moved according to how he sees best for us to give a witness to the world that we are the church and he will watch over us and protect us. Thank you, Pastor Kathleen, and if I may ask, uh, this one of those wonderful sentences that says, if, you know, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, I figured that if it was my time to go, the one thing that we don't have to fear is death. Amen. There is no sting anymore. Amen. The, the sting of death has been taken away through our Savior. So thank you for bringing that to our attention this morning on Psalm 23. That was, that was powerful. So thank you. Touch me. Really if I could speak with yeah. what you just said. Yeah, you know, the enemy does look for opportunities to bring us division and to take us away from serving. So this is not an opportunity that he's going to get from us as pastors or anyone else sitting here this morning. No matter where we are, we're shepherd over. 
Yeah, but thank you for bringing that to us. It's a powerful song, so I appreciate that. All right, we do have a couple of small songs to sing for us, and uh, Angel said she was going to lead us in one of these. She's ready. She's ready. So what is our first song? Uh, Love Lifted Me. And is it on a... At, at her request. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's sing. Just stand right up to it and sing. Okay, you can stand if you like or whatever you feel. Love Lifted Me.
tithing and our thanksgiving uh, and giving of our tithes and our offerings, and our plates are in the back. So instead of passing them around, when you get ready, if you'd like, time, uh, just go back there and put it in. You can do it when at the end of the service, which is fine, and just leave it and put it in there, okay? So that would be great. And meantime, uh, Gail, has, Gail wants her and I to do something, a little special song. So if you don't mind, it says, people need the Lord, and so we're going to kind of, she sprung this on me, so we're going to see what happens. I don't guarantee anything on this, so... But uh, we're going to give it a shot. You want me to stand here? Is that okay? You want me to no, that's fine. Huh? But you stay. That way Joseph's good. Okay. <laughs> I'll do a little bit. to me. You've fallen away. You've gotten complacent. And I, I truly believe that God will protect us from things that, that are out here. But yet, even though something happened to Bob and I was I went from this church and I didn't ex exist anymore for whatever reason, I'm not afraid of that because my eternity is written in the book the Lamb's Book of Life. It's called yeah. Heaven. I'm going there, not for my worth and not for anything else but for Jesus Christ. And I believe that needs to be said to this whole community and throughout this world. There is only one way. And unfortunately, I think we have fallen away from that. And God's telling us, hey, it's soon coming. I'm going to come back and I'm going to take you with me. But in the meantime, those who are here, I believe, and left behind are going to go through a pretty rough time. But we don't have to because we have God and Jesus. So we need the Lord. And we need to more know that until that comes, let us love each other and treat each other with respect and care and concern. I have something I'm going to just do for a few minutes about Psalm 91. I'm going to read a little bit of it, explain a little bit of it, and how I believe God is, is, is telling us without any uncertainty what, he, what, he has to, what He's saying to us this morning about Him and how He treats this situation. Pastor Kathleen is going to share a little bit from Jude about how and what we need to be doing. And so together we're going to be sharing this a little bit. And we have we might share with each other. We might talk with each other during this time. You're welcome to talk. I think last the last time we did a message, you all got involved in it and you talked, so it's okay. So Psalm 91, and I'm going to just start out with this. 
And I'm going to have a little prayer, and then I'm going to ask God to increase our mind and increase our heart and our thought pattern and let the Holy Spirit speak to us. So, Father God, please be with us today. Thank you so much for allowing us to have a time in worship, and we uplift your holy name. You have said in Chronicles, if my people will humble themselves and become before you and, and forgive, ask for forgiveness and seek your face, you will hear from heaven and you will forgive us and you will heal our land. We pray that right now, Father, that you heal this land, this horrible disease that's going on. Yes. But we put it all in your hands. We uplift your mighty name today and let you be the power. We have no fear because of you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for the words that are being spoken today in uh, Psalms and in Jude. Jude, and let them speak to us powerfully in thy wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for coming again. It's just great to see y'all smiling faces out there. And uh, I mean that sincerely. Yeah. If you look in the mirror, I brought, had that mirror with me. If y'all look in that mirror, you look how beautiful you really are. You know? So, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Well, it says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. That's us. We are here now in this, in this wonderful sacred place, the church of, of the living God. And we are here this morning. And we shall uh, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We are under his wings. We are under his protection. We are under his uh, guidance and, and, and his Holy Spirit. And it says, I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom will I trust? I wonder about that sometimes. Do, who do we really trust? Do we put our trust in the government? Do we put our trust in jobs? Do we put our trust in, 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 in the earthly? Or do we really put our trust in a God that is in total control of everything out here? Amen. God. He is in control. He knows exactly what's happening out here. But he's looking for his people to do what? Mm -hmm. To pray. To, to trust. To witness. To do else, yeah, right, and to witness. And to be helpful to others out here in a time of need. What a better time for this church right now to be willing to say to this community, look, we're here for you. We're, our doors are open. We, if you need food, we're here to give you that. You need assistance, we're here to help you with that. We want to be doing that stuff. Our deacons are calling all through the, our communities and doing that work right now. And they're making those calls. So it's important for us to do that. It's important that we have this uh, time that we can spend together and be in prayer for one another. But we got to know who we put our trust in. So who do you put your trust in? You know, it says here, Surely he will, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And what does that mean? Well, it simply means this, that he will protect you from the things that are going on right now in the world and, and from the perilous pestilence. What's pestilence? Pestilence is disease. Pestilence is whatever goes on it can destroy us totally in a matter of a minute. I want you to take notice of something that really came to my mind recently. Three weeks ago, or a month, just within this last month, our stocks, 29,987. If you look at the Dow, highest it's ever been in the history of our country. And in three weeks, it's now 19, 628. It went from 29 to 19. You say, what's that got to do with anything? It's got to do with your money. It's got to do with people's investments. People are running scared. They're going to lose their money. We looked at Gail's the other day, and she had money in the bank. It's gone down drastically. Oh, wow. What am I going to do? Nothing. But in three weeks, this country, who is the greatest in the world, has been brought to its knees by a God who's saying, Hey, people, trust me. Turn to me. For, ask for forgiveness, and I'll heal your land. Stop putting all your faith in the money, the stock market, and the science that's out here. I created science. I'm the one who did all this. I'm the one who made everything. Trust me first. And we're not doing it. Our churches are becoming complacent. They're not preaching the gospel. They're not preaching heaven and hell. They're not preaching the, the word of God, the truth and the way in their life. They don't preach Jesus. They preach comfort. 
I don't want to preach comfort. I want to preach what Jesus is telling you. The comfort comes from His Word that I'm going to heaven because of Him. Amen. That's the comfort I have. That's the trust in my putting into is God. Not this world. I don't care what happened. If I lost my home and everything else today, that wouldn't matter a bit to me. Because God will do what? What will He do, Pastor Kathleen? He will provide for you. Give us our needs, right? Amen. What will He do for you? Amen. He will protect you. He will take care of us. Now, can you get sick from this? Yes. That's right. You can. And I might. I told Gail the other day, hey, if something happens to me and I go to heaven, this is what I want. And I told her, she said, what do you want? She wanted to be cremated. I said, no. Not really. I said, I just want you to bury me and, and put my body down in the ground easy, simply, the best way you can. Have a little memorial service if you feel so led. And then let me go because I'm going to heaven. I'll meet you there. I'm not the least bit worried about the money that we have because God will promise me what? I will take care of you and I will give you your needs. Not everything I want. So I'm not worried about that. He said he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. His truth. Jesus. The truth. We've got to listen to that. God's word is his truth. This word is absolutely the, the bottom line right here. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction of the, that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Amen. And who do we got to remember? How many of us remember the three boys that were thrown in the fire? There were four in there. They didn't get burned. How many remember Daniel being thrown in the lion's den? ferocious lion that were hungry and God shut their mouths. Abraham said, uh, told Abraham to go kill his son. He said, no, don't do that. I want to test your faith. How many of the people who, from Moses who led out and he parted the sea so they could come through? If God can part seas, shut lions' mouths, don't you think he can protect us from this? Yes. Amen. Amen. If I'm getting a little wound up, please forgive me. Let us keep going. <laughs> <Yeah>. Keep preaching! <laughs> ah, that's going to come out good on that one, ain't it? Y'all listen to this out there. Y'all want you to notice. <clears throat> it says, Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. The wicked are going to be destroyed. The ungodly folks, one of these days, are going to face... God. I heard the other day on TV some representative in Washington said, what do you mean pray? Get rid of that prayer stuff and get with it with science. That's the only thing you can help them. They mock the prayer. Our vice president is praying every day. I don't really care whether you're Republican or Democrat or whatever you want to be. But I love to see our leaders praying. And if he's praying for health and he's praying for the right thing, and that's what we need to be doing. Not be afraid of this thing. And then it says, Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. Because you decided to trust in God, nothing is going to hurt you. And that doesn't mean that you can't be hurt in this world, but it means you can't ever be hurt spiritually. Amen. And you will never lose your eternity with God. That's what it's about. That's what God has given us today. That's what this beautiful psalm speaks to us about. Don't be afraid. And you're not, because you're here. If you were, you wouldn't be here. And I'm not knocking anybody else who feels that way. But we need to trust God more now than ever before. Our time is coming. And one of these days, we'll be taken from this world suddenly. Raptured right out of here. And I say rapture means God will come, Jesus will come and take his church out of you. And then his judgments will come, and it's coming. Because it tells us in this book that it's coming. He didn't say exactly when, but he told us when it gets close that things are going to be so fast. I said this this morning, and I'll close up here because I want Pastor Kathleen to mention you a little bit about this. We'll talk about that. But what I want to share with you from the time Jesus died on the cross and rose again, 33 A.D., 
or yeah, AD, to 1850. 1850 years about, we went by horseback and buggy. Then finally a little train came in, we had a little train. And then from 1900, folks, 1900 years, not much changed, except, yes, during that time, if you look at the Bible, all the sin was going on and the living and the promiscuous and the killings and the mocking. The same thing was going on today. But also, from that point in time to now, nothing took place. From 1900 to 1967, we went from nothing to the moon in 67 years. 1948, Israel became a nation. It says in the Bible, Israel will be the olive tree, the fig tree will come back. And that is one of the signs of the end of the time. Israel is now a nation. Jerusalem is now the capital, which is exactly where Jesus is going to reign from during the thousand year millennium reign. He is going to reign from this earth as king for 1,000 years. That's coming, but not before the tribulation. Folks, we have the, the rapidity of this world has, is on a, whew, like a rocket. And look what happened from 67 to now. Look at our technology. It has gone in one, less than 100 years. Look what we've done. And look at all those 5,500 years that not took place. God told us last days in Daniel that things are going to go rapid. And they're going so rapid right now you can't even, you had to spin. But don't be afraid of that. That's encouragement. That's to say, hey, my Lord's coming soon. i got to get ready. But to get ready, we need to be out here telling others about Jesus. That's what it's telling the church. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the time. Don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it might be another 500 years. That doesn't matter. Our job here at this middle room of church is to tell others about Jesus. Now, there's a heaven and a hell. There's an eternity in both ways. And don't be afraid of that. People don't preach that much anymore. I don't very seldom hear the preachers talk about hell anymore. But you know what? If God didn't want us to know about hell, why did he talk about it in the New Testament? Why did Jesus spoke mostly of that? Every time he spoke, three times as much he spoke about heaven and hell. And why do you think he came? Well, that leads us into Jude, doesn't it? Yes, sir. You want to talk a little bit about Jude and share some thoughts with us? I will. Thank you. Please? Yes, you, don't mind, you don't mind if we talk together? what the Lord got us here. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's just I'll get this stuff out of the way. I would say he has opened up the chair to be a little warm. Now it's time to get hot. Are <laughs> 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 you sure that with me? <laughs> I'm not going to show up that way. Okay, go ahead. Get hot. Let's see what happens. We share this together as the church. I will be sharing the words. Uh, Pastor Bob and I had some time to, to share this week, and uh, along with that, he, he opened up to, to share a little bit of what was moved for, for me this week. And Father God has taken me into Jude. Uh, I was taken back when I read this because I had not been taught a whole lot about Jude. Well, as I opened myself up, he gave me some knowledge that Jude holds a pretty well uh, substantial encouragement here. Jude was the brother of James, half-brother of Jesus. Uh, I was aware that Jude speaks about encouragement to prepare the church not to be open or taken back by false teachings or false doctrines. So as I was in preparation for this to share with the church, I, I, was, I was moved to really come into uh, Scripture 17 through 22 this morning. I will read from that with you. But just be reminded, this is the call to pers persevere to the, the early Christians that Jude was seeing a concern not to be misled or misdirected by false teachings. As Pastor Bob shared, he was presented with some mockery this week. Uh, and we all are going to face that as we walk and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is happening. It's been happening. But it's coming rapidly now. So let me share. So to come from Jude's, Jude... Uh, verses 17 through 22. But dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, In the last times there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the Spirit. 
I do believe that what Pastor Bob said earlier about spiritual, we are definitely in that awakening time that you know our connection to the Father who is spirit, that is something very important that we need to get out of this natural way of seeing or thinking and get connected to the inner being that's in us and it's his spirit as his children. So we are told to do this. So I believe that does move us into places as the church to go and witness even more during the time of walk that we're in here at this place of darkness that is trying to defeat us and we refuse that to be taken over because we know we're greater because God is greater than any circumstances. Let me continue. Verse 20. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in the most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. What does that mean to some of us when we pray? We talked about that this morning in Bible school. It's just amazing how, you know what, we pray. We pray to the Father constantly. Pray without ceasing that comes from Ephesians. You know, we're told. Stay in that connection all times. Not just set a place in the mornings, light your little candle, get really comfortable with your coffee. That's great if that sets that time for you to be aware that God's right there with you. That's wonderful. But I think His presence is with us 24 hours a day. Every minute we're walking. I believe that and I claim that. First, um, verse 22. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them to show other people mercy. This is a great opportunity for us now. You know, instead of being uh, in front of the Fox News and seeing all the stuff that's being told about what's happening, we know it's happening. They know it's worldwide. But take the opportunity to get out there and witness to people that are lost. There's so many people now that are re reacting in fear. And you know what? This is an opportunity that we need to reach out and help them, comfort them. That our Father God is in control. As Pastor Bob shared here from Psalms 91, I find it very opening and very moving that the Spirit of God is moving amongst us every day. Before Pastor Bob even shared that he was going to preach on 91 this morning from Psalms, you know, Father God had taken me that earlier in the week, uh, Psalms 91. And then here we are into Lent and sharing our scripture. You open up your bulletin, there is Psalms 91. I believe that's a powerful message that was channeled through Pastor Bob this morning. As well as Psalms 23. You know, he is our shepherd. So you know what? I don't have all the answers. Pastor Bob don't have all the answers, but we do know how to go to the Father who does. And he will motivate us. I, you know, I'm reminded that sometimes we are driven by fear. People, people that live in fear, we are not carrying out what we're capable of doing. So my encouragement this morning from Jude is to be, to be open and to be moving, persevere, push through. You know, people are going to speak things that are going to put fear in people's paths, and I refuse to let that come into my path because I know my God is here. As Pastor Bob says, we're not protected from anything. The only thing we're protected from is losing our salvation. And if it's God's choice and His will to protect us from the disease, it will be done because our God has said that to us. If not, we all know, as Pastor shares, we know where we're gone. I have to remind my family as I walk in this time of serving other people, and I'm on the front line, along with Pastor Bob, along with many people, the medical people out there. We're up there on that front line serving people to help people during this time. But we have to walk in faith. As I share with my family, if this comes upon me, then you know what? I want a celebration because I know where I'm going. Don't be angry with God. God's got a plan here. This is His way of bringing us to our knees. He may want to confine some to their homes so where they can make phone calls to people. He may confine some people not to go here and there. He may be moving people to help other people. That's how I see it. That's what I get. And I'm sharing that with the church. I believe that fear can enter our minds first thing we wake up in the mornings. How long are we going to live? What's going to happen today? How am I going to do this? What's going to happen to my money? What's going to happen to my family? Immediately you've got to get out of there. Because any sort of fear will cause it to even compound things as we hear more from the news. You know, I don't have my head in the sand. I have my head where it needs to be. It's in my heart. And I encourage the church to do that. I love the words that the pastor shared this morning from Psalms. I love the words that are shared from Psalms 23. As he spoke, it's amazing too, he spoke too from 2 Chronicles. Verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will, from heaven, I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. 
I believe that's what we are doing as a church today. I believe that's what we're called to do as a church. Continue to pray. Encourage people to reach out to our Father. Pastor Kathy, may I say Absolutely. Something? Absolutely. I'm glad you read that again. You know why? Because I truly believe in my heart that I've been told in the, in the church that we can't depend on the Old Testament anymore. That it is not part of our ministry anymore. Old Testament doesn't exist. And you know what? When I read those words and when I go through the scriptures and I look over the prophets who prophesied Jesus Christ, it is more relevant. And when I see those words up there that says, if my people will turn and ask forgiveness, I'll forgive them. Amen. And I will do this. This is God's promise. Amen. How can we not listen to that? How can we not listen to His Word, the Bible? It really hurts myself. <laughs> I won't say what it does, but it does. It hurts me to think that we are going to take God's word and say, oh, that's not relevant anymore. There isn't anything in this Bible that isn't relevant to me. And I know it is to you. Is that right? Am I telling the truth? I didn't mean to interrupt you, no, but I just felt... I, I share this with you, Pastor, because, you know, you speak You speak this morning from Psalms 91. We, you know, we, we walk in this to encourage. We're accountable to help each other. So, no. No, the Spirit is definitely moving here this morning. Look at us. It, and like Pastor says, you know, there's ones that they are generally moved to stay home. We have compassion for that. Their, their awareness is to protect others as well as themselves. And if Father God places that on their heart, we are united in spirit. It's not always physical that we need, but we do need to be connected spiritually. And the only way to do that is listen closely, stay in prayer, let Him, let him move you. Well, my belief is this, is I don't think God's church needs to be closed. I'm not saying you shouldn't stay home, but I don't think God's church should be closed. We need to be open at the time of crisis. We need to be in prayer with each Amen. other. Amen. Now, yes, I want everybody to be safe in here. And you chose to come. And I'm grateful for that. And those who stay home, fine. That's okay. But I, I'm, I don't think those doors need to be closed. I think they need to be open. For what? For whatever. But what we're doing this morning, we're not trying to be defiant. What we're trying to do is say, we're going to take our concern to the God who is, is in charge of everything who can make a difference. And I would like, I wish there were 4,000 people here listening to this. I think our churches need to be doing this throughout this land and asking God to, hey, we need forgiveness, Father. But I can't do that. I can't, can't make them do that. But I know what I'm going to do. And how I feel about this, I've talked to Gail about it, and she's right there with me. And talked to Pastor Kathleen, she's right here with us. You all came today, so thank you. Thank you for believing that God is a God that we can trust. And, and, and like I said, there's not any judgment on anyone else. Love everybody, and it's our time to call on them if they need something to do. We're here for them too. We're here for everybody in this community and for each other. Our church needs to come together and let's beat this thing through God, through prayer. He gave us science, by the way. He could fix this in a, in a, in a second. As you're talking, Pastor, would you like to share this scripture? This was moved to my heart that goes along with Jude as well in 21. Encouragement for us as well. And just, as you were speaking you there, he just moved, yes. Keep yourselves in God's love mm -hmm. as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. to bring you eternal life. Amen. That's patience. Meantime, what do we do? I believe it's given us a pretty good message. Stay morning. in His love. Stay in His presence. Yeah. And build, you know, build each other yeah. up. Right. Pray and keep everybody in that place. Let me say something. Is anybody here going to go to the store today or tomorrow sometime and get something else? Any of you? Maybe. Probably. Probably. I mean, Gail and I, after church, we have to go to the store. We've got to get some stuff. Uh -huh. What's the difference of going to the store and going in there and looking at all the people in there or coming here and praying? Praying is a lot better. <laughs> I agree. I probably don't need any more food. I have you know something. I've lost nine pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> it's about time, right? Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, first we have Psalm 91, trust the Lord. He will take care of us. He will not let harm come to us. And then it tells us in June. In June. 
to, to, to be perseverance, keep pushing forward. Keep going. And remember, you, you know, people may say, well, you're out here and mock you for being out here, but you have to just reassure them, I am protecting you. I am protecting you. God has me protected in ways that he may tell you different. But don't let them, don't let them dis be discouraging to you being out there. You know, I just believe we are the church. We are supposed to be moving. I do believe that. Just use precaution. Yes. I also believe that, you know what, he will heal us. He will oh, bring I'm, us I'm through this. Well. I believe that as well from Second Chronicles. But yeah. prayer is the answer. Yeah. So, trust the Lord with all our heart. Mm -hmm. Lead not on our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. Amen. 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 Now, I think... For our closing, what we have a song, right? We do. We changed it from what's in the book. You changed. Okay, you changed it. Uh, shine, Jesus, shine. And oh. then uh, Marie snuck over and said, "Could we also do How Great Thou Art?" Sure. So we'll add that at the end of this one. Okay. Okay. Now we might do it. Uh, you need it in your book, though. It needs. You might have to read it. I don't know if it's in our hymn book. Uh, yes. It's just a powerful song, I think. Well, well we can sing yeah, a couple of verses. Do you know that'd be great. sister in the book? Uh, I think we'll see if it's in the blue hymnals. We'll see if it's in here. Because I'm, I'm positive. I'm not sure. Sometimes they can remove. You know, one thing we've got to remember, too, change is good for us. So all this changes that's happening around us and in this movement, you know, even with us as we carry out our worship services, praise him for that because he's the one that's actually shaking things up. Would you agree, Pastor? <laughs> uh, he, yeah, I think maybe this is a good message for us. I don't know how you find it in this book because it's It's not in the blue book. Not in the blue book. Okay. Well, we can sing it just from just sing it. Do you have it on the Y'all know the first verse, I'm sure. It's it's up there on uh, who's got it on. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's sing our hymn first, and then we'll sing that. Shine, Jesus, shine. And then we'll do how great thou art. It's a good hymn to close with. How are we doing? Bill, we do miss your leadership. <laughs> well, it's kind of good, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Shine, Jesus, shine. Shine, Jesus, shine. It's a good song. I'll try, but I'm uh, from you. And we heard distance from Yes, I couldn't talk. Sue was quite happy. We do miss your leadership. She was quite happy yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Let's sing How Great Thou Art. I don't know how to take it. Y'all know the one. Y'all know the first one. He's looking for it. I know it's up there. Go into mine, maybe. Okay, there you go. Oh, there you go. You need to see this. It's amazing how God has orchestrated this. Dr. Jeremiah is the fellow that says, you know, the tribulation come, but we're not going to be here through that tribulation. And that's the time of judgment. He's not judging his church. You will not be here for judgment. You're not made to be judged. You are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You will not be here through that time. But you will be raptured. You will be taken. But you will see all this. But the people who are left behind will be left behind in a place. Do you think it's bad now? You're right. It's ten times worse than this will ever be. Because it's the judgment on the ungodly. On sin. On sin. Jesus died for sin. And then he rose and conquered it. We have that promise of heaven. Because we've been forgiven. But those who have not will pay the price as well. There's a consequence to both. Mm -hmm. Heaven and hell. So that tribulation is coming. But I believe this is the precursor to it. And I got mocked for that the other day by some pastors. They said, oh, it's been like this forever. I said, it's not the same. 
but they felt like they, you know, wasn't important. I think it's important. I'm not worried about it. I'm not fearing it. I'm not preaching it, but I'm preaching it. Get busy. Now is the time to tell others of Jesus. So, on that note, Mary, will you bring and get the light? May we go in the love of Jesus Christ today. Be safe out here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for supporting it. We'll be here next week. One of the decisions of the uh, the leadership team was if we do an Easter service, it may not be a dawn service, but we might just do some church outside if it's nice. And so we'll do it. But because we want to do both Love Feast and Palm Sunday and Easter together, we may move it up. We don't know yet. It's a week-to-week -week decision. But this church will be open next Sunday. Okay, just like it is today. As long as I'm pastor here until they take me out, but however you want to, I'm going to have the to church up. So. Anyway, that's what we're doing. So I don't know. May we take the light of Christ with us. Go in peace.